Yeah, Terry Scott here from New Zealand. Um, welcome to my gallery. This is a piece I call a Midas piece, um, mainly because normally I insert gold leaf inside. This is a piece of Pacific yew. I normally take the leaves of the, the particular timber that I'm turning and then carve into my, my items. The proportions in my work is very important. It's all gauged on the um, magic mean, uh, one third, two thirds or Fibonacci. Uh, proportions have been thought out. Now I'm very fortunate that I can see a piece of work finish before I start turning it, whereas others, uh, they evolve as they're turning. So that particular piece there, I can see it finish with the colour, the shape, and because of, um, I've done my time on the tools, I don't have to worry about where my tool is so I can create that shape. Um, all my pieces evolve. I used to do a lot of square pieces. They then evolve to what I call my manta ray series. They've either got wings up or wings down on them. They then evolve to a teapot shape like this uh, with handles and all sorts of pieces sticking out of them. One thing we often see in the wood turning fraternity is people don't understand form. Pieces are often um, he look heavy and it's very important to me that when you look at a piece and if you think like this one that it's light, when you pick it up, it should be light. Okay? It, it's the same effect as if you're walking down a set of stairs and there's one more step. What happens? You get that mm. accelerated heart. If I can get a customer to pick this up and it visually it feels as they see, then the pleasure in that because they're so tactile, is often a selling piece of work. This is a bit of um, olive growing in Cornwall Park in Auckland. It was planted by Sir Logan Campbell uh, 180 years ago. I managed to get a piece. Um, I enter a lot of competitions. This had a first place in the Royal Easter Show last year uh, for plain bowls. Another item I like making uh, what I call round bottom bowls because they're interactive, they have movement to them. Here's another piece that um, one of my favourite trees is Pahutakawa, our national Christmas tree. Um, around about this time of the year it is blooming and the haze that comes from this, the, the blooms themselves it actually hurts the eyes, they're so beautiful. Uh, a lot of times taken in my work, I'll go over a piece like this 10 or 15 times until I'm happy and then put it on the shelf thinking I've finished it, walk past and take it back into my workshop again. Um, there's a lot of myself in my work. I, I love turning Australian burl. This is a bit of brown mallee. I've developed a system that I, so I can turn them very thin with um, support rings. Tell, tell us about this one. Okay, this piece here is a bit of ancient carry, um, 35,000 years old, dug out of a swamp just down the road from where we live here. I often take the grain of the wood and see if I can see a picture. In this case, I saw a beach and the sea and the horizon, so I've just carved a small schooner in here and I think it's, it adds to the piece. Um, there's probably 12 hours just in this band and a few more on the back. I use inlay of tarpa cloth, which is a cloth beaten from the mulberry tree bark in the Pacific Islands and then lay it and stain it um, I enjoy making platters, 
these are probably more corporate because they're large and they, they need to be walked around. Mm -hmm. I like with my work that there's an element of surprise, okay? Some would just carve leaves or do texture on the actual rim of a platter. I roll my work around the rim and once again, there's that element of surprise behind. Um, and this is ancient carry, but if, this is a Pahutakara bloom there. One of my favourites. Here's another example of the, the leaves carved and the surprise. <laughs> 